Hey class, today this is going to be section 4-3 and we're going to start modeling with functions. So we're going to be looking at some, I guess you can say, real life applications of what the functions are going to be. So we're going to model a function from a given scenario. That is today's objective. Now the importance of uh, mathematics to our society lies in the value to approximate or model real world phenomenon. Whether it be used to predict the high temperature on a given day or determine the hours of daylight in a given day or predict population trends, etc., mathematics is second only to literacy and the importance of humanity's development. So a few things to kind of note is we use this math to approximate reality. And when we're approximating this reality, there's always going to be limitations to this model. So an example that I have here is let's say you're you know, grapes go on sale at the local market for $1.50 per pound. Well, one pound of grapes costs $1.50, two is going to cost $3, and so forth. But now, if we wanted to create a formula that's going to relate the cost of buying grapes to the amount being purchased, we'll say C is going to be cost in dollars, and G is going to be the number of pound of grapes. So the cost is going to be $1.50 times the number of pounds of grapes that I get. Now, if I want to expand that further, that $1.50 grapes, and I wanted to write that in function notation, I would say, well, that cost in grapes as it relates to G, so C of G equals $1.50 per pound of grapes. So if I wanted to say, um, you know, if there was like, if I plug in one into the grapes or one into G, okay, that's gonna give me C of one, and that would be $1.50. If I wanted to plug in, say, two pounds, then I'd put, say, C of two, and that's going to give me the values or the dollar cost of what it's going to cost me per number of pounds of grapes that I get. So it's just a way to model it. Now, even though mathematically there is no restriction to the domain, in this case, there is an implied domain to this scenario, meaning there are some things that you just have to assume that exist. So, for example, uh, you can't go to the store and purchase a negative pound of grapes. So I automatically have to assume that the number of pound of grapes has to be greater than zero, or greater than or equal to zero. You also can't go to the nearby store and purchase a million pounds of grapes. And so we kind of have to consider the realism that's going to exist within our scenarios. And so you're going to see these types of restrictions with our scenarios. So for example, if I were to dissect this one here, it says the height h in feet of a model rocket above the ground t seconds after liftoff, there we go, <laughs> is given by this scenario here. Now, what this is saying here is this is the function when it starts to 20 seconds, and this is modeling the height. So this is what the height is. And so, and then at zero, this is, or my height's gonna be zero after t is going to be greater than 20. And so what it's saying is like, this exists because of this implied domain that's going to exist in the scenario. But we'll see what that means. Well, why, why is this zero when t is greater than 20? We're, we're gonna answer that question. So for the first one, it says, find and interpret h of 10 and h of 60. So h of 10, because 10, is between 0 and 20, so 10 works for this function, meaning this value of 10, this is like that piecewise function, it only works for one of these. It's not gonna work for both. And so this 10 works between 0 and 20, and so 10 is gonna be applied here. And so I can take 10, and I'm gonna plug it into this function here, as I did so here. Now if I simplify that, I'm gonna get it being 500. And so I can make the statement that my height is going to be 500, you know, at that given value. At 10 seconds, my height's going to be 500. And then now h of 60, well, 60, that's greater than 20, and so my height's gonna be zero in this case. And so this is my time, it's gonna be at 50 feet when my time is 10, and then here in this case, it, it hit the ground, it's just chilling on the ground. It's not moving at all, and so that's why it says after time is greater than 20, 20 is when it hits the ground, when it's greater than 20, it's just going to be zero because it's just sitting there on the ground. Now the next one, it says solve where h of t equals 375. So that means I take my function 
that's expressed here, set that equal to 375. And now I just want to solve for t. So I subtract 375 on both sides. Then there's a negative 5 in common, so I can divide everything by negative 5. Then we'd factor this. And so this would factor into t minus 5 and t minus 15. And so I get it's 5 and 15. And so at time 5 and at time 15, my height is going to be 375. Next one, it says an online comic book retailer it charges shipping costs according to the following formula. And it says, uh, so the shipping costs and dealing with n the number of comic books, okay? So this is what the shipping cost is if you buy between 1 and 14. And if you have 0 here, if, you, if the number is greater than 15 or equal to 15, then the shipping cost is going to be 0. So what is the cost to ship 10 comic books? Okay, well, 10 is going to exist between 0 and 14. And so I plug it into this one here. And so that's going to give me 15 plus 2.5. So that's going to be $17.5. And so it's going to cost me that much to ship that. Now it says, what is the significance of the formula S of n equals 0? So when this equals 0 for when n is greater than or equal to 15, well, if you bought enough comic books, they're giving you free shipping. And so you're getting free shipping from that, which is awesome. But the idea here is that um, whenever you order greater than or equal to 15 comic books, they're going to give you that free shipping. Example number three. It says for n copies of the book me and my sasquatch a print on demand company charges c of n dollars where c of n is determined by the formula when n is between 1 and 25 you use this function when n is between 25 and 50 you use this function when n is greater than 50 you use this function so it says find and interpret c of 20 so that's going to be this domain here, 20 is between 1 and 25. So I'm going to use this one. So C of 20 equals 5 times 20. And so that's going to cost $300 for 20 copies of the book. Part B, it says, how much does it cost to order 50 copies of the book? What about 51 copies? OK, well, if I order 50 copies of the book, then this is my domain, because n will be less than or equal to 50. And if I order 51 copies, well, 51 is greater than 50. So that's going to be this function here. So C of 50 equals 13.5 times 50. That's going to be $675 for 50 copies. And then if I do the 51 copies, this is going to be 612. And therefore, it's going to be $612 for 51 copies. Interesting. It's cheaper. If I just bought one more copy, it's going to be cheaper than if I bought 50. That's pretty interesting. So it says, uh, your answer B should get you thinking, which, hey, it did. Interesting that. that. Uh, suppose a bookstore estimates it will sell 50 copies of the book. How many books can, in fact, be ordered for the same price as those 50 copies? So referring to the fact that we know that it's going to cost for the 50 was 675, but what if we did it at this rate, at that 12? Okay, so we're estimating at that 12n cost, so we have to say 675 equals 12n. If I get n by itself by dividing both sides by 12, n is going to give me 56.25, so therefore I can say approximately 56 books. So maybe I should just order it off 50, so just say 51 books because it's going to be cheaper. You know, if that extra book sits on the you know, stand there for a little longer, whoop de do But that should get you thinking. And even in uh, other areas of life, you know, you can consider buying in bulk might be cheaper than buying in smaller versions of it. In closing this lesson, what did we learn today? Well, we actually modeled or learned about modeling real life scenarios and using some of the basic mathematical principles that we already know. Now, I want to hear back from you. What are some examples or what could be the importance of modeling. Now this does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.